Well, thanks for tuning in to Electric Bike Journal. Today, we're taking a look at the Globe Hall LT. We're gonna find out the specs, and of course, if it lives up to the hype. This is a bike that we've been eagerly anticipating willing and ready to ride and um, it's been a blast to ride out but i won't give too much away so stay tuned we'll talk about the specs and of course share our thoughts on how well it performs For those of you following along, we are halfway to our cargo bike roundup video where we compare a bunch of cargo bikes together to see how they stack up side by side. Um, as of right now, we do have two other videos out on other cargo bikes, so be sure to check those out. We'll have links down below. And uh, if you aren't following along, please right now click subscribe. That would really help us continue to grow the channel so we can keep bringing bikes on to review them and more importantly, bring a group of bikes together to compare them side by side, which we all know we love seeing. Uh, for now, let's talk about the Globe Hall LT and really dive in to find out what this bike's all about. Coming in at $3,500 is the Globe Hall LT. This is the long tail version of the Globe Hall. They do have a short tail version as well. Uh, this is boasting an overall load capacity of 441 pounds and has a max range of about 60 miles. The Hall LT has an aluminum frame with a steel fork mounting points all over this bike to accommodate all those accessories and additional accessories that you want to put on there. And it sits on 20 inch wheels with three and a half inch wide fat tires. What really sets this bike up for success before we dive into the components and the overall spec list of the Hall LT is the adjustable stem and two stage seat post. This allows this bike to be adaptable to a really wide rider height range from four foot five all the way up to six foot four. At six feet tall, I do not feel too big for this bike at all. And our testers at five foot three can confirm as well that they don't feel oversized for this bike and the bike doesn't feel oversized for them. Now talking about components and specs before we jump into our thoughts and opinions on performance, uh, we'll start with the drive unit. This uses a Globe branded 700 watt rear hub motor with 90 newton meters of torque. So very powerful motor that really can get you going uh, regardless of how much weight you have on there to uh, make things really enjoyable and you're not going to be straining. And that is paired with a 772 watt hour battery, again, Globe branded. Uh, this is UL certified, so it's going to be safe, you know, being a part of that specialized umbrella. Everything is going to be at the proper high end of standards for safety and certification to make sure that every box is checked. Drivetrain is a MicroShift Advent 9-speed drivetrain. Uh, we've become big fans of MicroShift over the last couple of years, uh, seeing their drivetrains come on a lot of different bikes. They, they just work well, and uh, we are always thankful when there's a quality drivetrain on a bike because shifting through gears is something that you don't want to waste time doing with the poor, poorly designed one that doesn't work right. Uh, stopping power is supplied from Tektro hydraulic disc brakes. These are the HD 535s, and that's a hydraulic disc brake with four piston calipers, both front and rear, and those are paired to a 203 millimeter rotor. So uh, really big rotors, which we'd love to see, and four piston calipers. Again, we love seeing that, especially with a heavier bike, electric bikes in general, um, you know, big stopping power and big rotors means that it's helping manage the weight as well as, uh, you know, get rid of heat and shed heat from those brakes sooner if you really need to be using them a lot. Now the Hall LT is not the lightest or the smallest cargo bike that we have brought on test for our roundup. And it's definitely not the lightest and smallest cargo bike that we've had on test in general. Uh, coming in about 88 pounds before the accessories, uh, it is robust. And when it comes to riding it, as a heavier bike, uh, you don't really feel it. It's, you know, low center of gravity, you feel planted, you feel stable, and really that overall weight just matters when you need to lift it up and move it around, um, which is something worth considering for some of you, um, but not everyone. Overall length of the Hall LT is 77 inches. Um, so it's a little bit longer than some of the rest of the bikes on test. It definitely can, has more than enough space in the back for two kids. You know, a lot of these bikes have room for two, um, but this one kind of stacking up against most of them, you can visually see that it has plenty of length on that rear deck to put two kids carriers, no problem, or one kids carrier and a full size kit. I mean, however you're gonna do it, there's plenty of space back there. Uh, additionally, it does have a 24 inch high deck height, so very low 
deck height, which again, is something we've talked about before. We really like to see that on cargo bikes. You know, the deck itself sits lower than the top of the tire for my mountain bike. Um, and just thinking about picking things up and throwing it back there and, and experience of picking things up to put it back there, having things down low, uh, not just helps the performance and having a lower center of gravity, but it helps you when you're loading things up there. You don't have to reach as high. Now I've been hinting at the handling and maneuverability a little bit here as I talk about putting gear and stuff in the back. So we'll just start off there with it loaded. Um, with weight back there, uh, depending on how high that weight is or how um, you know noodly and moving around it is, uh, it, you don't really notice it too much. And when it comes to you know how much power you need and how you want this bike to perform, um, it really has little impact on this bike, especially if you're staying you know, way within the bounds of the load capacities. Uh, if you're gonna top that off and be at the max, uh, you're gonna see a little bit of performance drawback um, and you're gonna see the stability and how planted this bike is be a little bit more um, tippy toppy, uh, unbalanced, unsettled. And that's just gonna happen with any bike. So it's definitely not a, a knock at this one. Uh, I think that low deck height really helps to keep this bike as stable as possible. Now, when it comes to unloaded, um, despite being 88 pounds, you don't feel it at all. You can make very tight turns. I'm on a little bike path right here that has little side exits left and right, and it makes it very easy to quickly make a turn. Um, the wheelbase, again, the overall length being 77 inches, it turns very nicely and smoothly. You don't feel like it's gonna dip and fall over on you, especially at lower speeds, which is what I see happen often um, when I'm watching people ride bikes. I see them slow down a lot to take a turn and I can see that their overall height, their center of gravity and their balance being up very high, um, bikes be unstable for them when they need to turn quickly or sharply. Um, but I think this bike as a whole, just everything squatted and much lower, um, it works out very well. Now getting into performance, which I know most of you are probably looking for uh, hearing about beyond how well it handles, especially when loaded. I'm sure those are neck and neck thoughts and information we're looking for, but riding it around unloaded uh, and full turbo, this bike screams and quite frankly is probably one of the few bikes that uh, has a hub drive motor that I would really want in my garage. This application, this style of bike, having a throttle, having the hub drive, it works out perfectly. Um, I'm a big fan of mid-drive motors. I like torque sensors. I like that feel. Um, but in this application, I don't even think about it. it. And it is something that having all of that power from that motor is really nice when cruising around town and wearing casual clothes and not wanting to get all sweaty. Um, Additionally, what's worth mentioning is on our 12 mile loop that I put all these bikes through, uh, both loaded and unloaded in full turbo to see how they did for speed, how my overall energy felt and how much exert, you know, effort I was putting in, um, as well as what amount of battery was left over at the end. This one, without giving too much away, performed very well. What I can share is that it had a very competitive average speed for the duration of those 12 miles, uh, both loaded and unloaded. And that's in the flats and in the hills. The speed aspect is in favor of this bike and being able to go fast and, and really not feel like you're having to work hard to maintain those higher speeds. Um, where I started to see this taper off a little bit um, was taking it out of turbo um, for one section of the hill as I did with all the bikes and just pedaling it. Talk about a dramatic shift uh, with all of that power seemingly taken away and it almost felt like it was off uh, in comparison, you know, very black and white uh, after a few pedal strokes getting familiar. Instantly, I realized this is a bike that is more than enjoyable to ride around on flat grounds, the neighborhoods in that eco mode and conserving your battery, um, but having extra pedal assist modes to be able to boost that power all the way up for the hills specifically, or if you have a lot of weight back there, uh, you're gonna be really thankful that it's there. When it comes to overall range, uh, both loaded and unloaded, in the unloaded test, that 12 mile loop, full turbo, blasting through, I had about 49% battery left and an estimated range of about 10 and a half miles. So, Range is a weird loose number to um, kind of gauge as every rider's different, every type of terrain's different, weather's different, bikes are different. You know, those details can really impact what you expect out of a bike. Um, but for myself, 
kind of putting all the bikes through side by side, I can create a little micro bubble of how they perform. Uh, this getting about 22 miles in eco or in full turbo mode, sorry, is right on par with what I expected and actually very impressive uh, with the very powerful motor, big battery, heavy bike. I would have almost expected to see 16 to 18 miles, but seeing 20 plus uh, was really cool to see. And I think that this bike just happens to be relatively efficient. And I still had, you know, 50% battery left almost at the end of my 12 mile loop. And I was out for a while, you know, that's constant with lights and this and that, you know, you're looking at 30 plus minutes, you know, 30 to 40 minutes for most people, depending on where they live. And I think most commutes for average people is less than three miles. So if your commute is around that, um, you know, you could almost go a week. Um, if not, you could go a whole week and use the full battery before a recharge. But if you're going home at the end of the day and you have up to 60 miles between Eco and getting down to 20 ish uh, for full turbo, that's a pretty wide window of a day's ride that most people could have. So um, battery performance range, general power, uh, very impressive, and uh, definitely doesn't have you wanting more. Something I would have liked to see, um, because it is such an adaptable utilitarian style bike, is having a option for a range extender or a dual battery option. Um, I feel like there's a lot of space that something like that could fit on there. So maybe in the future, that's something we'll see from Globe, but for now, single battery, it is easily accessible, so if you do buy a second battery and you want to hot swap those or strap one to the rack and just change them out, you totally could, um, but it has room for one right now. Kind of wrapping up that performance detail, uh, loaded, doing that 12 mile loop. The numbers didn't sway too far. It was pretty consistent. Um, I had you know 50 pound bag of chicken feed in the back, 20 pound bag of dog food up front, and I didn't really feel the weight at all. And when it came to the steep hills, where I was expecting it to start to taper off, it trucked right along and got to the top very effortlessly. Um, I think out of all of the bikes that I've ridden in this long tail cargo category, this has been the bike that I have felt like I've put the least amount of effort out while riding. Um, so a huge props to Globe for making something that just lets you feel very relaxed and be able to use it to its full ability. Um, and not have it take it out on you. And for a lot of people, that's the kind of cargo bike they're looking for. Um, if you're not looking for that and you wanna feel like you're earning your pedal strokes, um, there's other cargo bikes and uh, stay tuned to the channel. We'll, we'll show you a few other ones that'll uh, give you that direct cyclist feeling. Now, when looking at the Hall LT, there are a few little nitpicks we have, um, some things we would have liked to see. Again, we understand that at the $3,500 price tag, we can't get everything, um, but it would have been nice to see a little bit of extra comfort for the rider. Now, the tires and the saddle really are the only two points of contact uh, that offer comfort for the rider. And despite the really robust, rigid frame, uh, the tires do a really good job and the saddle is very comfortable as well at absorbing most of the elements on the ground. I would say it's about an 80-20 feel. So 80% of the time you feel very comfortable um, on whatever the terrain is, but there are those moments, you know, the speed bumps, the cracks in the ground, those sharper edges um, where you could feel the bike just kind of take them on and therefore that means you're taking them on and it can be a little bit jarring. I've definitely paid attention to people on the back, you know, kids on the back and watching them on some of those harder hits kind of bounce a little bit. Um, it's just gonna happen with any bike, especially when it's not got suspension in the back and the tires do a very good job, but it would have been nice to see a suspension seat post on there. I do have to give a shout out to our friend Francis. Uh, he's got a really cool channel, a few of them actually, and I'll tag those down below in the comments, but he put a suspension seat post on his own Hall LT, and it just makes so much sense. Having ridden, um, for instance, the Canada Cargo Wagon, which has one, um, it does really make riding the bikes a lot more comfortable, um, but at $3,500, we totally understand why that isn't already on this bike. You know, as much as it would have been nice to see, uh, it's something we can definitely put on there as an upgrade, and, I think it'd be worthwhile upgrade for many of you if you are interested in this bike. The only other real issue um, that we had with this bike was how low everything is and kind of how robust and bulky, specifically the rear end of this bike is. If you do get a flat tire, 
it is not the easiest task to approach um, to be able to fix that, especially on a ride. Um, you're gonna be needing some tools and needing some help uh, to really get in there easily. I find myself doing a lot of flat tire fixes on bikes and it's not bragging at all. It's not fun. You don't wanna do that. Um, but this one, it, it was tricky. I, you know, you have to balance it, lift it up, get the height, but there's very little clearance to get that wheel out of there. Um, and then once it's out and you do fix it, getting it back in there, it, it is a little bit of work and there's a lot, depending on your accessories, in the way. Um, some bikes, there's more room and that's really nice. I, I don't think these tires are susceptible to many flats, um, but if you do live in a place that has really bad goat heads or really bad thorns, uh, keep that in mind. I'm sure you already think about it because you likely are riding there and are having to deal with them as it is. So um, that is definitely something that it is a little bit of work and definitely something to consider uh, on any bike is the maintenance side of things and how you're gonna approach that, especially if you're out on a ride. And if I had a flat tire on the rear of this and two kids with me, um, I might be calling you know, someone to uh, help us out to uh, help get away from any um, you know, bummed out emotions uh, for not being able to finish a ride fast enough. The accessories that we've done are this front rack with this Mick compatible uh, quick release front basket. Um, I think that's critical on every cargo bike is a front basket, front rack setup, um, being able to throw a backpack up front or whatever gear you have up front and leave the back open and available for the larger gear, the larger people um, is very nice. And I think it's important to look into those. Um, additionally, we've put these pannier racks that mount to the fork. Um, and with those racks, we could run a regular um, pannier rack on, or pannier bag, sorry, on those. Um, but we have the specialized Fjallraven Collab uh, Cool Caves, which are plastic totes like this that have a nice bungee strap, just like this one does. Um, but they're taller and a little bit narrower. You put one on both sides, you can fit a bag of groceries in each one, and then still have room up front for your bubbly water and uh, all the room in the back for the rest of your groceries and gear. The back, this is something that's really cool. And I think we're gonna start seeing more cargo bikes do accessories like this. Not only are the front bags quick release because they're pannier style, uh, this uses that Mick plate. So again, quick release. If you were to remove those passenger pads, underneath that is two more Mick ready mounts for two more quick release accessories. And you can buy extra little you know, accessory mounts all of that rear rack and even this front rack is T-slot aluminum. So you, it's very easy to buy something or come up with your own sort of rig to mount onto that, use the T-nuts on that rail system to be able to mount extra things to this bike, um, which if we wanted to put those cool caves on the back and ditch those really robust floorboards that are kind of like two skateboards on the back, um, we totally could, no problem, and be able to get those on and off the bike quickly and easily. And I think that that is something that is often not addressed well enough with many cargo bikes is how quickly you can change out your accessories to adapt it for whatever errand or application you're using that bike for that day. The last little thing of accessories that, again, kind of has me excited is the rear rack, um, kind of halo bar situation uh, for kids to hang on to. They do have like a, you know, headstone style shaped one for uh, holding onto that you could put there, but they do have a bigger box that is up higher. And it's cool in two ways. It slots into these mounts down low and those use like kind of a hitch pin to hold them in place. So not only is it toolless to remove that rear rack, you just open up those quick release pins and pull those out of the way. You can also change the height of it because it is indexed at different heights. So you can push it down lower for, you know, shorter little ones and raise it up higher if you have more gear, maybe a pet back there, whatever it is that you need a little bit higher of a wall. Um, so again, the overall ecosystem of accessories on this bike, I really do like the fact of they are quick, fast, easy, and adaptable, and they give you room to kind of even make your own accessory mounts and stuff as well. Um, just hats off to that idea, um, because every accessory is gonna cost a few more bucks, and when that accessory has room to be used multiple different ways, it really helps justify being okay with buying it to begin with. Overall, the Globe Hall LT coming in at $3,500 checks a lot of boxes, you know, a lot of power, large battery, large load capacity, and as a utilitarian 
vehicle effectively in your home. Um, something that's adaptable to be outfitted with, you know, a lot of different accessories is really what sets this bike apart. Um, so we're excited to share how it stacks up against the rest. So be sure to leave any questions or comments you have down below. Um, as we get closer to our roundup, we'll try to be prepared with answering as many of those as possible. And if we don't have an answer in that video, we'll try to answer them here in this one. So thanks again for watching. Be sure to click subscribe and uh, turn notifications on so you see when that roundup video comes out. So thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.